Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about this sword right here. It is a, or was, a katana from Fidestazan, and I'm going to elaborate on the journey it took to get into its more disheveled state. And before I do, a couple quick notes. This is a review sample. It was sent to me for free. If you think that makes me biased, you know at the start. And two, I do study and half study Japanese-style swordsmanship for a minute, but I don't fancy myself an expert at it. So keep that context in mind as you hear my babbles and rambles in this video. Anyway, uh, before I do the bits and bobs and features, this is around about $150. At the time of recording this video, it was $195 retail. It's on sale for a little bit less. It doesn't exactly have a name. It has a long name, but anyway, if you're interested in one, it will be linked as well as specifications and all that stuff in the description down below. So check there if you're keen on looking at it. So it's around 150 bucks right now, at least as of the recording of this review, and it was $195. Anyway, it's linked in the description down below, as well as stats and all that kind of stuff if you're interested. Uh, but the basic important note there is that at $150, this is a budget-minded sword, and I have to keep that in mind as I evaluate if I think it's worth it. So you're going to hear me point out all the little failures that I see, but most of them are going to be acceptable, or a lot more of them are acceptable when you're talking about a, a very budget-minded piece like this. So, uh, anyway, on with the review, the bits and bobs and fits and features and all that kind of stuff. Uh, more or less, I'm going to have to travel back in time a little bit because it's no longer on here. And I can tell you that this is a bamboo theme, one that I've seen on a number of brands. It seems to be from the same parts bin as a number of Longchuan sellers have. Now, the fittings themselves, honestly, at 150 bucks, I can't complain about sloppy lines or tool marks or things like that. So long as it suits the, the general purpose of Akashra and it stays on there and it doesn't have any sharp ledges that hurt me, I'm really quite contented. And this has that. It didn't have any sharp ledges and generally speaking, well, it was on there anyway. It stood on. The ends, though, are not finished particularly well. There is minor signs of tool marking. There is some bunchiness near where the Ito terminates or where it comes down to the Kashra, uh, and there are some some bits that overlap and transitions that don't look particularly good. All par for the course in a $150 sword, though. This is, again, very budget-minded, and therefore uh, a lot of the, the details and transitions and cleanliness that I'd hope to see are, aren't necessarily something that's an expectation here. Now, it is worth noting that there are swords in this price point that have had relatively clean lines. Uh, one from Huawei was... Uh, comes to mind. I don't know if it's, it was a little bit above the $200 price point. There was one from Hanban Forge as well that was $200 and overall had, had pretty clean lines. So it is doable, just uh, not not necessarily expected. Moving up to the Ito or the, the rest of the grip. Now, shape-wise, I didn't necessarily mind it. And I, as you can see, the, the Kashra did eventually come off. And well, that's what all this Wangus looks like here. The, the Kashra came off, but then the handle basically just unraveled. And I don't think they used alternating Itomaki and that's par probably why it started to come completely unraveled when the Kashra came off, and that's not really ideal. Most of the $150 swords even use alternating Itomaki, and when they have problems, they don't completely come undone and, and become completely useless. So uh, that is not necessarily great, that the, the Itomaki fell apart as much as it did. While it was together, though, it was comfortable. The Ito wasn't particularly tight. Uh, it wasn't particularly loose, though I've certainly had more. It overall fell into par for the course, I would say, in, in terms of what you get for 150 bucks. Ideally, it could be tighter, but if you're buying a sword in this price point, it might be advisable to spray it with some lacquer or something like that to tighten it down before you really start using it as a training tool or for fun in the backyard, because it'll help tighten all those things up and keep it from loosening and, and turning into what you see here. Now, the other problem that I wanted to note is that, obviously, the handle has exploded and has cracked apart, which is not super common. I was able to hang on to it, and it didn't hurt me using it because it fell apart down here, and I could still grab up here, so I continued my testing. Uh, but the handle did come apart. It doesn't give me a lot of confidence that whatever it's made out of, it's, it's particularly durable stuff. Though, it did fall apart after I was doing some pretty aggressive nonsense with the sword, as in cutting thick branches and throwing it at a tree and, and the like. Anyway, uh, we have white Samegawa panels, which I can see here, which do appear to be real Samegawa. Uh, small nodules to be expected, and some, you know, Manuki that are, are pressed in here, which appear to be little dragons, and one of them is, is lost and gone forever in the, in the backyard somewhere. There are two Makugi pins, and while the handle did explode, the Makugi pins did not come out, and they stayed in there pretty solid. Uh, moving on to the Fuchi area here matches the Kashra. Transitions were also okay, but not necessarily great. Uh, the Suba is a, well, it's it's a Tsukashi style, but I'm, I'm not sure what it is. It appears to be 
cast, I think, or maybe it's cut out of a water jet. I'm not entirely sure, and it appears to be painted rather than patinaed. It's a handsome looking Suba for the money. I can't say that I, I mind the overall theme. The Habaki is a simple brass Habaki. Be nice to see some, some other option here rather than the simple brass. Again, not going to fault it given the price point. It did what it was supposed to do though in its time in that it held the sword reasonably well. It had a reasonable amount of tension and all in all things were were acceptable when it was together. The Habaki did, did the job that it was supposed to. The Saya is a all white Saya and this is <laughs> Uh, risky to me. I, I'm generally not a huge fan of the all-white Saya. Uh, they did make it not blotchy though, so I, I commend them on that. White can be a tricky color to get consistent and even, and this is applied consistent and evenly. But I do get a chance to make out some other stuff. It looks like the Ito was tied on, or rather the the knots were tied on the Segeo cord, uh, and it's left some small impressions. Here, you have to really be fixated on it to notice it. Uh, there are minor imperfections and ripples, which show a little bit more, I think, in the white than they would in another color. And there are no horn parts on here, no horn kurigata, no horn uh, kojiri at the end, and no horn koiguchi. It's just a wooden surround. At the same time, for 150 bucks, not many swords offer, offer those kinds of things in that price point. All right, so onto the blade, the pointy pointy stabby part. Now, regrettably, the blade doesn't have a huge amount of features for me to share with you. It's a through hardened blade, so it doesn't have a hamon. Uh, there's nothing kind of special in that regard to share. It's not a folded steel, so the hot or patterning in the steel isn't there, and the polish doesn't bring out any kind of banding effects in the in the steel that was used here. So it, it's not quite a satin polish, not quite a mirror polish. It does have a bohi on it that wanders around. Well, it doesn't wander so much except for where it terminates at the end, and the it isn't necessarily even on either end. The blade came sharp, it had a nice curve, but it's a shape that you've probably seen in most Longchuan China swords. It's it's a budget sword and has a similar shape to a number of other budget swords out there on the market. So un unfortunately, there's there's not really much else to disclose here. No reinforced kasaki, no other uh, particular things to note other than the lines were reasonably clean. A $450 sword and it was in, in there straight and came sharp and good, which is, I guess, the, the things that you're hoping that it would do, even in a budget. Now, in terms of using it around, I can first talk about moving it around as a practitioner. It was fine. Uh, it's a budget piece, so, you know, temper your expectations. Uh, the training tool fights you a little bit. It's a little raspy, a little noisy, but the tension was okay. I could draw it, sheathe it, and it's pretty light at two pounds or a little above two pounds. Again, specs and all that kind of stuff are in the description down below. I had no problem moving it, and it did everything I needed to do for training. And I, I trained with it a few times, and at no point did the Ito seem particularly loose. The Kasha didn't come off, and it wasn't problematic, though most of the time I was training with it outside in the cold, and, uh, and so maybe it all froze, froze together. When I talk about actually cutting things with it, well, it did a reasonable job at first, cutting water bottles, pool noodles, it seemed to do well. Now I cut the pool noodles and it popped them apart. That requires a certain out of the box sharpness, which I did not touch up for this review at all. And so popping them apart is good. It did a good job with it and I didn't have any problem, any problem in terms of general pool noodles. Ideally, it could be a little bit sharper, but I would say that the sharpness level here is sufficient. When it came to water bottles, it cut through water bottles okay. And it cut through the neck of water bottles and didn't have edge deflections or problems, which is important. Sometimes if I cut in the neck of a water bottle, which is a lot thicker, area in plastic, a lot thicker plastic, I should say. Sometimes edges will deflect or there'll be problems. I didn't see that on this sword here. Uh, from there, though, I did more aggressive things. I cut into a, a large paper tube and cut into those tubes okay. I can't say that it ever really made it through easily, but if I provided it enough chutzpah on my swing, then I could kind of, I could get a sufficient cut there, but nothing where the sword was doing the work for me. Later, I took it to some other aggressive targets. I cut into some branches, and this is where the, the kasha started to have problems and come off. Um, I chopped into a frozen bottle as well. It chopped the bottle, or not the bottle, but a frozen, a frozen cream jug. I, why do I have so much cream? Never mind. I like a lot of cream in my coffee. More, more coffee than cream. More cream than coffee. Anyway, not the point. The point is, it was a frozen block of water, and it cut through, and the blade did not deform. It didn't do anything bad, and overall, that's a good sign. So we've got a little bit of problem with the kasha, but everything else is holding right and tight. Uh, from there, I cut a shaving cream bottle just because it's fun and neat to do. And then I went on to some more aggressive targets like the Tree of Woe. And well, not quite the Tree of Woe yet. First, I threw it at a tree several times. This is where, again, more problems started to happen. The kasha uh, was 
Fortunately, I grabbed it, but it would have been lost if not. Uh, the handle started to separate a little bit. The Ito started to come undone, throwing it at a tree. The Suba, though, didn't seem to bend, even though it hit the Suba at once, so good on the rigidity of the Suba. The blade also didn't bend, even though it hit the dirt and stuff like that. The blade didn't bend, and the overall, it seemed okay. Uh, from there, I took it to the Tree of Woe. It's worth noting that this tree has broken other sorts, so slapping it on the flat of the tree is no joke. Other sorts have broken here, and several strikes into it, several smacks on the side, a slight set was able to be visible. I could, I could see it bend just a little bit, but not really a lot. And then from there, I brought it to the Croquet Stake of Doom, everyone's favorite. <laughs> everyone's favorite. Uh, and so the croquet stick of doom, it took several whacks. I hit, hit it on the edge several times with a good amount of force. Uh, I turned it around and hit it on the spine. That's where it broke and it made it to the croquet stick of doom, which is an accomplishment. It also made it to turning it around and striking it on the spine, which is again, an accomplishment. Some Sometimes they don't make it that far. It took several strikes to break it. And when it did, the grain structure appeared generally pretty good. I don't know if it's coarse or not. It doesn't look as refined as some, but it also looks pretty pretty clean to me. Anyway, that's what I can share with you about the journey it took to break the sword. Also worth noting on the croquet steak, the handle gradually came apart more and more, um, but I could I could hold it with one hand safely, and so I continued, I continued the testing. Um, normally I would stop, but it wasn't hurting my hand to use, and I felt like the pegs were still in there, and so it was still kind of together enough to continue testing. All right, sword friends, that is all the useful information. I've showed you high-res video. I've showed you all the, the bits and bobs and fits and features. I brought it to failure and brought you along for the journey. And so hopefully you have enough to decide if it's worth your hard-earned money or not. For me, though, I would say no. And not because it's a ripoff. This sword held up reasonably well. And it's worth noting that I was impressed at how much it took to bring it to failure. It lasted the croquet stake of doom. And that's not a small thing to note for a $150 product. Uh, that said, in the category, there are other things round about this price point from Hanban from Jayco, from uh, Ronin Katana, from a, a number of other manufacturers like Ryan Sword, and I thought they all did it a little bit better. And I have other videos on those other manufacturers. If you're interested, check out my channel. But more or less, other swords in around this price point have had factors that I thought held together better. The Kashra coming off, not great, even though if you sprayed a little bit of lacquer on it, it would probably hold on. Same could be said for a number of other manufacturers, though. Uh, also, the non-alternating Ito, the fact that the handle kind of lost parts along the way. Uh, there's other swords that I think will hold up or have held up better for the money. And it's not to say this one is bad or a ripoff, but if you're if you're asking me would I spend my 150 bucks on this or something else, I'd probably go a different direction. Anyway, that's what I've got. Special thanks to Fides Design for sending me the sword. I have a couple other swords to review from them and we'll see how they hold up in comparison as well. Uh, but those will come at a later date. Anyway, that's all I've got. Cheers and thanks for watching.